Hey guys, I'm Thiago Kifuri. I'm here in Atlanta, Georgia in a field tech headquarters. So today we have a beautiful Fox body Mustang Nitros on the dyno. Let's see what's gonna happen today. I'm here with Luis. He's a technical director from field tech and responsible to drive the car on the dyno. This is a brand new car, first time on the dyno. Yes. What like is a, the... It's, it's, it's a, a cool deal. It's a cool deal. They used to run like a similar combination like this one on a carb and they, they figured out that it got to a point that was really hard to achieve like maximum performance mm -hmm. for a model like this on a class that's so competitive without having the fine tune, the fine adjustability that you have on a EFI. So they swapped to EFI. Mm -hmm. They came here over here to dial in the car so they can go to the track and work on the car, mm -hmm. right? So uh, the, I personally feel that's a really good step for them because that's going to allow them to go further with the same project, you know, mm -hmm. th the same car will go quicker just because the now they have the ability to manage the fuel and the timing. They got rid of the distributor too, now it's coil unplugged. Mm -hmm. Any time, like people used to say like, oh, you, con you can't go negative timing on a nitrous car. Mm -hmm. The problem is not the nitrous, it's the distributor. Because if you go too past negative, it tries to flip to the next cylinder and that creates problem. Mm -hmm. Coil unplug, you can manipulate timing the way you want. So like now Oops, they have like a, a wheelie control. Wheelie control now on this car, if it needs to go negative 20 degrees to keep the front end down, you will. And the car stays the nose down and they don't lose the run, they don't flip backwards, they don't hurt the chassis. So this is really useful. I think it's like a big step up on their game. Mm -hmm. And this car runs in a no time category? No right? time, no time, small block nitro. So like a no number for you guys, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Okay, <laughs> so when you're driving the car for the first time, a brand new car, what are the points that you keep looking more? So it's it's a fresh build, let me say, right? So no. like a, we want to make sure that everything works as it should. So a first run, we make sure that the oil pressure stays there, the fuel is close enough, you know? Before we do the run, we're going to check time, you're going to check that stuff. And during the run, we do a short pull. So mm -hmm. if, you, if you notice on the run, we just did the first one, two change. It's a two speed car, mm -hmm. but it didn't went all the way. So this way we know. Converter works, trans brake works, gear shifting works, everything works. Mm -hmm. Now they're gonna check up the motor, put a new set of plugs, they're gonna check valve train, make sure everything is okay. Mm -hmm. And then we can do a full run NA. Mm -hmm. Once the motor runs perfectly fine on naturally aspirated, then we start spraying. Because mm -hmm. on a nitrous car, that's the hard part, the NA. Once, once the NA is there, the nitrous is actually easy. Because mm -hmm. you know your flow numbers on the nitrous, mm -hmm. you kind of know your ratio on, the, on, on how much fuel you need to put on, you just, I need 100 pounds, I need 125, mm -hmm. I need 150. So it's kind mm -hmm. of flat curve. So like that's why we spend some time making sure everything works, then making sure NA works, and then we start spraying. Cool. I don't think Let's see it. And so how was the second pass with the car? So we finally made a full pull, NA, still on the motor. We gained like 20 horses. That wasn't the objective, but we gained power. Mm -hmm. We were trying to get like really close fueling wise across the board and we got it. So now we're gonna do a, a nitrous run. Single kit is still one to change. Cause then we can make sure like whatever we have fueling matches whatever is flowing on the kits. Cause you can have a 32 jet and it can flow way more or way less than a, a, your buddy's 32 jet. Mm -hmm. So we put it on average fuel on the rich side, mm -hmm. an average O2 target and we do a one two gear gear change pull and then we can see are we too rich are we not enough and because it's a short pull we can see the stuff before hurting the motor or something so like that's going to be our first and like okay this is ballpark what he needs and then we can start doing full runs at 89. So now we had a full pass. Full run, full run. Full run. So first full run with the jet. So we made like unknown power. <laughs> it was a really good run actually. So now they work in the car, you guys can see. We're gonna, we're gonna swap actually. We're not going to run both kits. They're gonna have like a larger second kit and then they can play with at the track. Mm -hmm. So now we're gonna swap to that kit. That's a larger kit. We're gonna try to repeat the run on a bigger jet mm -hmm. and see how much more power that kit has. So then they go to the track, they actually can either or or both, mm -hmm. right? 
since having both kids they can play with that thing mm -hmm. but that was that was a pretty good one that's pretty good here oh, i know <laughs> i was looking you were smiling so <laughs> yeah when i when i do a run you can feel it in the car uh -huh. right you can feel like it's a good run because if it's not you are bored feel it off yeah. if you don't have to prove anything it's not qualifying mm -hmm. for nothing but if it's a good run you can feel it the, the tone of the motor everything and the dynamic actually shows the power being built in real time mm -hmm. so i can see it if it's carrying the power if it's going up if it's diving whatever so like if you see it carries it makes good power yeah that's a good one that's cool good one. and when you change it, the jet you need to do something on the map of the car yes how does it so work? like uh, on this particular car they have two kits they're separate kits so right now i'm gonna set up a tune where progressive two is going to be enabled prime progressive one is going to be disabled so they have one one tune on the car they can swap on the fly it's one mm -hmm. kit with about four or five clicks on the screen they can swap to the other kit mm -hmm. without touching mechanically anything on the car mm -hmm. and they also going to have another tune that is actually both so one ramps in and then as this one goes 100 the mm -hmm. other one ramp in and they keep uh -huh. adding power to the track cool and let me ask you one thing for example, if I have a car equipped with a PL tech, sure. Can I be here with you tuning my car? Yeah. Yeah. So like a, this this like tuning class, you know, we call like a the hub dyno experience. It's open to any field tech customer, right? You come over here, and either or, we have people professionals that come here. They just want to use a tool to them by themselves try to figure out something. But if you guys want to know something, want to learn something, we are here to bounce an idea. So like when they came here, they were like man i want to run this and they're like just to have a heads up because i run a nitrous car mm -hmm. like this is kind of too low you guys need to step up the game and hey, uh, it's whatever you guys want to do but like we're here to, to guide so it's more like a guidance on how to be made the tune since we have so many experience like uh, so much experience on different tuners on on different cars different tracks and we race our stuff mm -hmm. like carlos race a turbo car i race a nitrous car anderson has 35 street cars <laughs> you know so like back that, that that experience is really cool it, uh -huh. it put us on a different level to try to make everyone run quicker that's it guys one more day here at field tech hope you guys enjoyed and see you in the next video bye